Hello, welcome to another video. My voice has been going, so um, might sound a bit different on this one. Um, but let's see what's in this PC. You can kind of guess when it is from, based on the fact that it's got the 2000 on the front. And beyond that, um, your guess is as good as mine. It's not got any stickers to tell us what's in there. We've got a CD rewriter, 8432, floppy drive, power reset, nice colour, beige, as you'd expect. And um, yeah, we'll see what's in here. I suspect it's older than Pentium 4. Um, it's probably not a Pentium 4, but let's have a look at what we've got. So we're going to make this a relatively edit free video I'll just pause it when needed um, right so on the back you can see it's kind of a budget power uh, case I guess because of this there's no sort of yeah and this it's just completely flat which isn't normal well it's normal for this time period maybe but um, it's not optimal it's not ideal and you've got the power supply above where the processor will be in here. We've got the keyboard and mouse, two USB, printer, game port, audio, and serial ports. We've also got a dedicated graphics card. Uh, there's no built-in graphics here, so we've got a dedicated graphics card. That's a little bit interesting. Uh, we'll have to see what we've got. And um, we've got a modem, as per usual. Used to be modems for everything and dial up internet was how you would get on the internet. And if you've not heard um, what dial up internet sounds like, you should definitely go check out one of the videos on YouTube that um, has that on. So let's see what we've got. Um, we'll also um, have a look and um, see if it works as well. Thirty volt. Oh, this is interesting. On this side, I think you've got a one of these hinges here, and you can this can fold out. But then, how would it do that? You can, what, push it that way and pull it that way, and then it'll flip down. Should we give that a try? I mean, it's also got all of this stuff screwed in. Um, and I'm not sure how that would work with these, um, cards but that's pretty cool maybe we'll do that because um yeah we'll give that a try that will give us a better view without having to take this power supply out uh, we've got a ida cd drive at the top we've got a floppy drive here and the hard drives have been removed there's no additional fans in this there's no case fans there's nothing here Pulling air in, there's nothing taking air out apart from the power supply. Um, I guess that's fairly normal for this time period. Uh, it's very clean. It looks like that is an ECS motherboard, and this is an AGP graphics card. And there's a VIA chipset here. Um, and it says it's a K7VZA revision 1.0. K7 means it's a AMD system. And I still can't really see properly down there, but um, let's, let's find out what we've got. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just unscrew this in case that helps us. 
taxi because the motherboard tray moves but this back plate is fixed riveted in place so whoops um how is the motherboard tray I, I guess I'm gonna have to take these cards out first got the audio cable from the CD drive let's remove this graphics card and have a look at that so we have got an ATI Rage Pro Turbo AGP graphics card From 1998. Does not say how much memory, as far as I can tell. I mean, that'll be a reasonable graphics card. I wouldn't expect it to play much in the way of games, but it's reasonable. And then we've got a modem got PCI slots and then AGP and then I think that will be AMR or there was another type of those sort of low-end peripheral connections so you probably can't even see that um, but yeah this is the modem it's a, a 3com chip on it yeah it's a 3com card and there's nothing much to say about this it's a modem and you end up with hundreds of these things. Um, let's see how we get this um, motherboard out and if it will let us. We might have to disconnect these uh, cables. That's for your hard drive. Well, there might be enough sort of wiggle. Let's give it a go. I don't know if you can see these instructions here. Rotate, rotate, uninstall, install, pull and push, etc. Let's uh, zoom in. Let's just give us a slightly better picture. So it's actually quite a nice case on the inside. Um, I slide this this way it doesn't do that does it maybe I need to screw these things Yep. <laughs> so that um, slid this way. And let's see if we can. Let it come down. So the power cable for the, um, from the power supply is. Stopping us here. Ow. So, it's a, I mean, it's a good idea in theory. <laughs> Maybe I should have just disconnected everything first. Now and this um, floppy cable is clipped in, which is not something you see every day. Okay. E Don't want to break that. Okay. 
Okay. Let's have a look at the motherboard. If you've dealt with sort of old kit like this, this is the time period when um, you would have capacitor problems. So these are the capacitors and what we've got here is these ones are bulging and leaking. So this, 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 this and this are all uh, bulging and that is bad. <laughs> It may work, but it may not. It may be intermittent. Um, these four look okay, but this is what I, eight capacitors that would need removing, resoldering replacements. And I've done that before on other systems, but um, it's quite time consuming, quite um, fiddly. Um, but it's generally very clean. Um, it's an ECS motherboard, as I've mentioned. K7VZA. And let's have a look what we've got under here. Could be, yeah, let's have a look. I'm gonna remove this memory because it's just easier. We've got SD RAM. 100 megahertz. This should unclip. And we have got an AMD. Um, socket 642. Says that there. Let's have a look at this. This is a little um, temperature sensor here to monitor the temperature of the um, processor. Let's see, we have got an AMD Duron. And I'll just have a closer look. This is an AMD Duron D650, so 650 megahertz from 1999. Should we see if this works? Oh, it's got writing on the back, maybe of when it was installed. Got these two corners to line up here. Very quickly put some tiny bit of thermal paste on. Um, the thermal paste there is still soft, which is surprising. But it does look like there's very little actually on the processor. Oh, and it's out of focus. There we go. And thermal paste application in three, two, one. This is um, the actual CPU die, and it doesn't have a heat spreader, so it's got these little pads that are sort of designed to help protect that uh, processor core, the middle square, from getting damaged when you put the heat sink on. Um, yeah. you know, quite easily chip or damage these if you weren't particularly careful. So, um, last time, if you watched the last video, you know, the power supply didn't work. 
So what I'm going to do, because there's these faulty capacitors here, I'm going to test the power supply before actually connecting it all up and switching it on. Um, okay, that is the heat sink on. This fan seems not good. But uh, I seem to have another heatsink here. So let's take this off. Maybe put a little bit of thermal paste on again. And I've got another heat sink. Whoops. With a fan that is um, fine. Okay, so this is the other heat sink fan I've got. They're roughly the same size, I guess. But with a bigger fan on top. Um, the wiring looks the same for the fan. It just looks a little bit more awkward, this clip. They don't really give you much room to work with because you've got these capacitors right up against the heatsink. And the sort of better heatsinks would, would use all three different connection points. Um, whereas some just have the sort of one connection point and then you need a flathead screwdriver to put it on okay let's uh, that is what you don't want to happen so may have just damaged this uh, memory slot <laughs> Let's try and do the exact same thing again. Okay, let's get a proper screwdriver. These um, heat sinks clips were a nightmare back in the day. And they continue to be a nightmare. Um, this one's got a nicer sort of little um, thing you can use whereas this one does not so you have to apply quite a lot of pressure pushing down and also twist it forward slightly to go over the thing or while pressing really hard so you kind of like worried you're gonna crush the processor whilst also fling off some direction with the well you would be normally using a screwdriver and it clicks in like that so yeah They were not good times dealing with these things. Although you'd probably have a screwdriver, the right kind of screwdriver, ready if you did this all the time. So, let's put some memory in. Let's check if the power supply works. Yeah, 
I've got my pass by tester here and we'll pan up and see what happens. So for this, you just need a power cable. Let's switch stuff at the back here. I'm gonna connect up the power tester. And we'll switch it on. And we're getting nothing. So again, I think we've got another dead power supply. Nothing happening. This would normally switch it on straight away. So let's get rid of this power supply. The uh, funny thing that I didn't do was actually switch it on. So maybe that's why. Let's try again. Okay. I'll do that. No, I must have, because it just doesn't work. So I must have like switched it off afterwards. Back in um, 2000, 1999, etc. Power supplies didn't really have um, quality ratings in the same way that they do now. You would just have our power supply and a lot of system builders would just use the cheapest components, the cheapest supplies they could find, um, which is why you had, a, I guess, cheapest possible capacitors, um, which eventually failed. Um, and same thing with power supplies. There's capacitors in there, and if they're cheap, then the power supplies can end up failing. This has definitely um, been built by a system builder because all the cables have been cable managed with cable ties. So they've tried to do a good job. Oh, look, it's a Deer Computer Company Limited. With a picture of a deer um, but you've got you know the sort of CE and FCC and various um, safety type markings but uh, you don't have like um, any other thing other than sort of voltage and amp levels um, and 250 watt max you don't kind of have the same standard of power supply that you have today such as efficiency or, you know, various different safety features. Back in the day, if, um, if something blew, and, you know, you'd end up losing not only the power supply, but various other parts as well. Oh, look. They've um, printed deer on that bit. There's nothing rat rattling in there like the previous power supply. Um, right, let's get a power supply. So I've got a Corsair power supply here. This is a branded power supply. And although it's a VS450, it has generally been fairly reliable for me. I haven't had any problems. And I'll just see if we can power this up and get something on the screen. And hopefully we won't have any further problems. So this is a um, 20 pin power connector. 
and the motherboard. There's no additional connections for the CPU, it's all through this 20 pin lead. And we're going to need to connect up the graphics card so that we can connect up the monitor. Use the squeaky chair. So we'll just focus on this at the moment and then if we get something on screen I'll move the camera. I'm going to switch the power supply on now. We've got a light down here, a green light. So that's better than the other power supply, which didn't do anything. Um, and if I find the power switch, I made some noise, I haven't connected this fan, which means I need to switch it off straight away so that I don't um, cook the processor. Okay, let's do that again. Switching it on, green light here. Um, and we have liftoff. We've got a beep. We've got uh, up here, 650 megahertz, AMD Durham. Got no keyboard, no floppy disk. 65 meg showing up and a BIOS from 2000 so it does work um, despite these uh, bulging caps let's switch stuff I'll see if this um, other memory slot works or whether I've uh, damaged that Okay, so it still says 65 megabytes. Um, so this second memory stick hasn't worked. I'll try in the um, third memory slot. And we've got 131 megabytes, so these two memory sticks are working, but not in the middle slot. Um, looks like that got damaged when I was fitting the heatsink. So, yeah, shall we um, have a look in the BIOS? Let's grab a keyboard. Connect up the keyboard. Nice loud beep. Um, just gonna go into the setup. Can you see that standard CMOS, advanced BIOS, advanced chipset, integrated peripherals? Let's have a look at PC health status. Uh, that's showing us our temperature 26 for the CPU, which is fine. Then there's the current system temp 23, CPU fan speed is 5000 RPM. And the voltage is a 3.3 volts, 4.95 volts, 12 volts, and V core of 1.64. So, um, it works. Um, I don't know how stable or reliable it would be without installing Windows on it. Uh, but if you'd like me to do a video where I try and install Windows on this, I can do that. Um, might end up having to replace these capacitors. Um, uh, yeah, let's see what else I can see in here. 
It's got a Y2K monitor and a virus warning options. DRAM timing, PC100, AZP4X mode, onboard USB, onboard USB 2, to enable USB keyboard support because why not? On chip sound, on chip modem apparently. Can't see what in there. Um, ID, PIO, UDMA, all the sort of usual stuff. Sound Blaster, onboard legacy audio, that's pretty cool. You can enable a Sound Blaster support for uh, DOS games and stuff like that. Game port, power management. Oh, yeah, the other thing um, down here, the game port on the back, I think you can use it as. Um, MIDI controller, MPU 401, my memory, I might be wrong about that, so let me know if I've got that wrong. Frequency and voltage control. CPU, hmm. Doesn't look like there's actually much control in here. Oh, let's save and exit. I wonder what the um, story of this PC is. You know, did the power supply die and did they just stop using it, maybe? Or did they upgrade and power supply died at some later point um, there's nothing to beat from in this system so uh, nothing connected no drives so there we go that's what's inside this PC a Duron 650 it's um, I guess not the most exciting system uh, the graphics cards not one of the more desirable ones um, and it's, it looks like a nice enough uh, motherboard it's very clean but the capacitors um, might mean that it's not really uh, worth fixing but let me know in the comments if you think it is and um, yeah thanks for watching um, and uh, I've got another system, another old system. Um, it's got a Pentium 4 sticker on the front, so I don't necessarily think it's going to be too exciting, but it's quite a neat little case. It's sort of, um, yeah, I'll be doing a video on that at some point. Okay, bye.